Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and today Games Workshop has decided to release more Elites information on a bank holiday, right after a Sunday. It's very confusing, I don't really know why. I'm okay with it, I'm going to cover it, but I don't know when, I guess. Anyway, so, they have released the sheet that is uh, the contents for the Kill Team Elites book, and I'm literally just going to read it out aloud to you. Yeah, look, I know you're wondering... What is this content? But trust me, maybe I will say something interesting. The first thing to note are sub-factions. I'm very excited about these. However, there are 12 of them. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. However, if we go over to this bad boy here, the index, there are 16 factions. So not everyone is getting a unique sub-faction thing, which is fine. It also kind of implies that um, Gellapox and Elicidian Star Striders are not getting it either. Neither are anybody else added. So, okay, that's fine. I mean, but let's see if we can figure out who is having to share. Chapter Tactics of obviously Space Marines. Easy. Regimental Doctrines, Imperial Guard, Forge World Dogma, uh, the guys that are steampunk, Admec, that's the word. Legion traits. Now, if I'm remembering things correctly here, I believe Legion traits is going to encompass all of the chaos. That's going to be Heretic Astartes, Thousand Sons, and Death Guard. It's entirely possible it will also cover Servants of the Abyss. So it's possible they are all going to share the same uh, Legion traits. Mm, it's also possible, you never know how they're going to do it, that perhaps Death Guard have to take a specific trait. Thousand Sons have to take, don't know, probably not, but let's see. Craft World Attributes, uh, well that's obviously the Eldari. Drakari, Drakari, I don't need to say that. The Mask Forms are obviously Harlequins. Dynastic Codes are obviously Necrons. Clan Cultures, Orcs, Septenets, Tau. High Fleet Adaptations, Tyranids, Cult Creeds, Genesis of Cults. Okay, so from that, it seems like they are wrapping up the Chaos Legions. We can then also assume that um, Death Watch and Grey Knights are going to be wrapped up in Chapter Tactics as well. That would be my guess, which takes us, and then I believe the maths adds up. So, Adeptus Astartes, Death Watch, Grey Knights all get Chapter Tactics, Heretic Astartes, Death Guard, Thousand Sons all get Legion traits. Cool. Let's keep going. So, kill teams. What do we get? So, we get a captain in Phobos armor. That's obviously going to be a commander. Phobos armor librarians. I'm assuming these are commanders. Or does this mean that the Adeptus Astartes are now going to have access to psychers in regular competitive kill team? Because they now have access to librarians. Hmm, interesting. Now, what I actually suspect is, if we go down to the bottom here, once we get Terminator armor, from there down, I'm assuming that is going to be um, elites and everything there up are commanders. Let's see. So, Terminator armor, infiltrator, suppressor, eliminator, terminator, veteran. So, um, I can't really say much about them. Um, apart from, I believe we know that Infiltrator, Suppressor, Eliminator are all from the Shadow Spear box. So it's interesting that they were obviously written in early enough to make it to print. That's cool. Shows that GW planned a little bit. Terminator armor. It'll be interesting to see if Terminator armor is armor is almost war gear, like armor you can put onto any of your models. And so maybe it's just a tax you have to pay to get a Terminator? Don't know. Uh, and a veteran, cool. Death Watch, we, we learn nothing about Death Watch here, except it's a single page, which is interesting. So I would actually assume that Death Watch is going to get everything Adeptus Astartes can get. But just, you have to pay extra for the SIA Special Issue Ammunition. Don't know. That's my guess. Otherwise, why would it only be a single page? Grey Knights actually get some options, which is a bloody first for them, good lord. So, uh, Librarian, Brother Captain, Terminator Paladin. Wait, Brother Captain? Wasn't the Brother Captain already released? It must have been something else. 
But okay. So, uh, Grey Knights are going to get access to a Librarian, which they don't need. They don't need it at all. Unless it's cheaper. Unless it's a cheaper commander. That's the only reason you take it. Because you already are using Psychic Powers. Brother Captain. Okay. Terminator. Or Paladin. Uh, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna say anything there, really. Um, I hope that they make a Paladin viable. Awesome models. I'd love to see them on the table. I hope GW has figured out how to make them work. Okay. A Desert Mechanicus. So we get... They're getting a Tech Priest Manipulus. Which is, um, the guy that already got released in a box. So that's a Commander. Uh, and then two Electro Priests. Cool. Uh, I don't really know what Electro Priests do, I'm gonna be honest. So, nice. Ooh, the Adeptus Custodes. So, they are getting a Shield Captain, a Custodian Guard, and Alarus Custodian. Interesting. Um, I don't know any of those things. Uh, I will, however, let you know I am kinda jazzed for Adeptus Custodes. As everybody is, I suspect. Um, because they are going to be another one of these single box kill teams. So I'm excited for that. I generally like elite armies though. Um, and elite kill teams. Because you don't have to paint many models. What's up next? Uh, Sly Marbo. Ogryn Bulgren. As I said in my previous video. I'm, I'm guessing that the named characters. Are going to be priced out. Of regular elite games. I assume they're going to be more commander level. But I don't know. Uh, Ogryn Bulgren. That's cool. I think that's actually going to really help. Astra Militarum. Who doesn't want a Bulgrin? You know, you're going to have access to a shield. So you're probably going to be at least on a 3-up invuln. Uh, you're probably going to have at least 2 wounds, if not more. You know, t are they T4, T5? Excited. I think they're T4. But either way, that could be a very uh, valuable unit to have. Uh, especially in Arena, when you're trying to block off some lanes. Very useful for Astra Militarum, I think. Okay, Heretic Astartes get Greater Possessed, Master of Execution, Dark Apostle, Master of Possession, Sorcerer in Terminator Armor. Oh no, those were two different entries. Chaos Lord in Terminator Armor. Now, uh, then Corn Berserker, Possessed, Terminator. So a Terminator is an elite, that's fine. Possessed is an elite. Corn Berserker, awesome, that's an elite. I guess everybody else is going to be a commander. I wouldn't have thought a Greater Possessed was a commander level, but it's placed up there, which is kind of odd. So may maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, I think we're excited for the Corn Berserker and the Possessed. Those are going to add a lot of flavour to the Chaos Kill teams, and also a lot of utility, because at the moment you can't really do anything in melee with Chaos, which is very strange. Okay, Death Guard. Lord of Contagion, we already knew that. Blight Lord Terminator. Death Shroud Tone. Okay, we kind of knew that. Yeah. They're going to be tough as nails. Thousand Suns, Scarab Cult Terminators. So, so far, I think the Thousand Suns are the first team that only have a single listing. That's interesting. Don't know what that means. Obviously, we knew they were going to be getting the Scarab Cult Terminators. Azurani, exciting. Okay, Spirit Seer. That's a commander. Illich Night Spear. Wraith Guard, Wraith Blade. Striking Scorpion, Howling Banshee. Okay, cool. So, obviously people have been asking for Striking Scorpions for ages. Adding in Howling Banshees as well. Very smart move. Good. I think it's uh, they should both be in there. And then the Wraith Guard of the Wraith Blade. Also good. Uh, they are they are providing something that the Eldar don't currently have access to. So that is inherently good. Especially for list variety. But it really comes down to the cost. You know, like... I, until we see costs and prices, there's no way to know if anything here is actually worth it, which is a bit crazy. Okay, Drukari are getting a Rack, Incubus, Grotesque, Mandrake. So first, they get an Incubus, that's pretty fun. Um, I'm glad Incu the Incubi were included, awesome models, um, and they're, they're just awesome models, really. Rack, generally in 40k, those are tough to shift. They get uh, an Invuln save. Grotesques, equally, they are like bulked out racks uh, so that's cool mandrakes um i'm going to be really interested to see the mandrake rules because obviously one of the big things about mandrakes in well i guess the fluff i can't really say in eighth but in the fluff is that they can they hide in the shadows and they appear out of the shadows so it's possible we might start seeing deep strike capabilities in kill team that would be pretty cool obviously you're gonna pay a 
crap ton to, to do that. Then Necrons are getting Lich Guard, Praetorians, called it. Um, I assumed that was what they were going to get. A little bit of a shame they don't get Wraiths. Um, Wraiths would have been cool, but there you go. So basically get the, the Lich Guard and the Triarchs, because those are the dual kit. So uh, Triarch Praetorians have Fly in 40k, so that's going to be very interesting. Whereas Lich Guard have Shield, so they're obviously going to be getting the 3 up Invuln. So I, I think those are actually two good, valuable additions to Necrons. However, they're going to be expensive, and Necrons are already in a position where you can't waste points. Like, I mean, you're already a tops, really, seven-man team. You know, you're five Immortals, two uh, Flayed Ones. So, interesting. Orcs finally get a knob, that's awesome, and a Mega Knob, and a Flash Git, and Boss Snickrot. So we already need uh, flash kits, obviously. Mega knob, that's cool. Um, I'm going to be very interested to see what those can be loaded out as. They're probably going to be super expensive. Um, a knob, we kind of already have a knob. Uh, it's called a boss knob, but uh, presumably this means that orcs are going to be able to, if they wish, run a full knob list, which is cool. Don't think it's very viable, but it's cool. Tau, what do they get? So. We get the commander in XV85 Enforcer Battle. We knew that from yesterday's article. They then get a Crisis Battle Suit, which I think we're all pretty convinced is um, is just going to be a, a battle suit. That's going to be the Elite. They get a Crook Carnivore. I assume that is just um, Games Workshop's way of confirming, so taking out of the White Dwarf and putting it into official rules that everybody can actually buy, because you could no longer buy the white dwarf that Croots were originally uh, revealed in. So I assume this is their way of putting them into the Tau kill team officially, or faction. And then Dark Strider, who is of course going to be another one of these Sly Marbo type chaps. Tyranid's Death Leaper, that's a name character. Tyrant Guard, Hive Guard, Ravener. Eh, that's a bit of a letdown. Don't get me wrong, Tyrant Guard and Hive Guard are okay. Raveners are cool. So again, I'm assuming that the Ravener here is going to have some sort of deep strike capability, similar to Mandrakes, which could be incredibly powerful. But uh, actually, those those options don't interest me for Tyranids. I was hoping for Zoanthropes, maybe. Um, that, that would have really interested me. Although I can see from a balance perspective, that would be quite difficult, because you're then adding that... Um, Tyranids would not only have Perils of the Warp, not Perils of the Warp, sorry, Shadow in the Warp to be anti psyker but then also they would have uh, their own psychic capabilities, so I can see why they didn't. Eh, okay, I'm undecided, I'm undecided, that's fine, I guess. And finally we come to Gene Stealer Cults who get the Sanctus, we already know, just like the Admech, they had added in the Tech Priest Manipulus, uh, they're adding in... I didn't mean Sanctus, sorry, I meant the Kelomorph. Uh, they're adding in one of the rules and models they already released, and codifying it into the into the Elite's book. But they are adding a Sanctus, a Nexus, a Biophagus, a Locus, and a Clamavus. I'm actually really surprised they did this. Um, I'm happy they did. For example, when the Gene Stealer Cults released uh, for 40k, we got all of these new, really cool, unique, interesting characters but we couldn't use them in Kill Team, and it was a little bit frustrating because they all look really good. Now, they are all there for us to take. I think that's a really good addition, and I assume Gene Stealer Cults are going to be able to use them to their fullest. Um, I don't 100% know what all of them do. I know the Sanctus is basically an assassin. He can take either a, a rifle or a knife. I don't know why you take the knife with him, but it gives you a bit of long-range fire, perhaps. Um, I don't really know about the others. I assume that the Biophagus is going to be buffing your guys, poisoning other guys, who knows. And that's pretty cool. There you go. So that is all of the of the um, main kill teams that are going to be added, plus the sub-factions. Let's also have a quick look. So something I missed out on was the rules. Elite Operatives is obviously just going to be telling us how we actually... Uh, play elites, what points levels we go to, blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. Uh, and restrictions. 
Maybe there will be a restriction of one elite per list. Who knows? I doubt it, but who knows? Uh, legendary Hunter Specialists. This is a new specialism. This is cool. It only lasts a single page, so presumably this is going to be a specialism that any elite can take. Ages ago, I had recommended a particular <laughs> uh, way of balancing elites while keeping the points cost down so that they are still viable. Uh, I doubt they would have done that, but I will be very excited to read that, see what they've actually done instead. Then we get Conquerors of the Kill Zones. Um, so that's 10 pages. Uh, that I think that's just going to be pretty pictures. Missions. Open play mission. Deep strike. Okay. Now maybe, maybe that is just a mission we can play. Or maybe that is going to be taking, adva adva taking advantage of uh, the deep strike mechanics that I suggested that they might be putting in with things like Mandrakes and Raveners. Yep, cool. Narrative play. Yep, cool. Match play. So we've got five new missions. No, we don't. We've got four. I apologize. So, Escalating Conflict, Crush Their Champions, Objective Ultima, Shifting Priorities. So that's cool. Um, I hope that these get included and kind of thrown into the mix of current match play missions. For example, I'm assuming that Crush Their Champions means Kill Their Elites. I think that's actually a great way to mix up the current match play scenario, um, scene. That is cool. Protect this character. Screw the objectives. Kill their dude, you win. I think that will be very healthy for the tournament scene. Not as the only mission you ever play, but as an addition to current kill um, tournament packets, very good. Escalating conflict. No idea what it is. Here's a suggestion. Perhaps escalating conflicts means that on turn one you can um, deploy half your force. Turn two you can deploy the second half of your force, I don't know, outside of nine inches of the enemy. Something like that, right? Presumably objective ultimate is going to be some sort of build your own mission. I don't know, that's a, entirely a guess. Anyway, I'm pretty excited. Let's think. Positives. Grey Knights have gotten more than I expected. To be fair, I expected them to get nothing, so... Uh, Astro Militarum, I think that's a great choice for them. Heretic Astartes are getting a lot, so hopefully we're going to see them do something. Uh, I'm sorry guys, but actually I'm really excited for Tau. I really want to run a Crisis Battle Suit. I know, I'm a bad person. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I do. Um, I, I was leaning towards getting into Tyranids recently, actually, because I already have a small team of them kind of built with a whole lore behind them but those elite options don't interest me so that's a real shame actually Ooh. um gc the cults great options uh adepts of starties eh, eh, fine fine whatever fine uh Drukari, i think have got a great set that have come out as well that sounded a bit sexual but it wasn't meant to be a great set of options um and actually, I might seriously revisit Drakari, uh, knowing that I can take a Mandrake, a Grotesque, an Incubus, and a Rack. Very cool. Okay. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to see what else Games Workshop has to come out with tomorrow, because they're probably going to do it again tomorrow when I'm at work and therefore cannot do this. Cool. So, what are your thoughts? Is there anything you're really excited for there? Is there anything you don't care about? Do you think I'm just straight up wrong and incorrect about everything? You would probably be very accurate. Anyway, Glass Off Dead, hope you've had a great day. Hope you continue to have a great day. Goodbye.